I love you all. There's some very good godly people here in New Orleans. I can tell. Praise God. would be the next, but I'm going to take a little pause. Okay. Um, this, uh, I, I just want to say that um, I really invite the Lord to be here with us now. I really invite the Lord just to, His presence, that you just feel the peace of God. Peace of God. I was praying with someone at church, and a lady was had her hand on this person as I prayed. And she says, as I'm praying, she felt the power of God go through her kind of. That's a wonderful thing, to feel the presence of the Lord. One day we will be face to face. But right now, we have these moments that we can feel his presence, his energy. The power of God, you can say, the Holy Spirit moving. Jesus said when he left, I will send you a comforter, and he will be with you. Every one of us will have it. Even Jessica. Yeah, look at her. She smiled. Good smile. Praise the Lord, we have a comforter. Even here, especially here, he's here to comfort us. A wonderful thing. Wonderful thing. I think of so many years I've been alive, 70 years almost, and so I just think of the grace of God. So many have gone on before me to the Lord. And I'm so anxious to see them in heaven. But not so anxious that I want to get out of here right now. I want to serve the Lord right now and help people find the happiness of the Lord. Amen. Okay, so let's do number 72. And to God be the glory. And I get a little glass of water or something. I dress today in my Filipino shirt. This is from the Philippines. So, kind of nice, yes. It's a gift to me. Yeah. So, praise the Lord. And then, of course, my full time. I love to preach that. Good morning. All right. A latecomer is a newcomer. Good. Very good. Bless you. Thank you. Wow, are you 
face? Yeah. Boy, what a lady. That's very nice. We both look at that. Hi. Here we go. Jesus cuddles us and hugs us even as we're laying in bed and resting. He's there gently touching us. Touching us. Softly and gently. I remember a story of my mom and my dad when they first married. He was down in the wheel digging. And my mom, he was scared to death of snakes and my mom threw a snake down there. I guess he came up running after her so fast. That was softly and tenderly, though. They were loving each other. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> oh, my goodness.
So my message today is different than the message I did back in June. I was here June 4th, and it was on the love of God. In fact, it was called the love of God. So today I thought, well, I want to do something that's going to be similar. So I'm going to do God is faithful. God is faithful. And I, I love the faithfulness of God. He teaches us how to be faithful. But boy, the faithfulness of God outdoes me every time. I try to be faithful, and I am faithful. But this time, you know, I just don't mark out to where I should be. But God is faithful to love us even when we fail, even when we don't do everything right, even when you were young mothers or young fathers. It is amazing how God makes up for them. And even we didn't do everything perfect. I look at some kids that grow up, they were spoiled, they were brats. And then they grow up, and all of a sudden, they are young men, young women, and they're, they are really well-behaved. And they learn to handle life well and relationships. And so God is able to do anything. And praise the Lord. I got two grandsons being baptized today. I'm so proud of them. And sent them pictures, and I told them a little story, a little things. I said, they're 13 and 15. I said, so proud of you because you are going to be God's men. You're going to be starting to do, do the baptism. But baptism in Christ is the most important thing. Water represents it. But being baptized in Jesus, that means that you let him come into your life and be your Lord and Savior. Praise the Lord. Okay, so I am going to be doing this preaching. Get a little drink of water before I start. And before I start, I have inspirational quotes I'd like to share. It says, 
Leave it all in the hands that will wound it for you. Elizabeth Elliot said that. Leave every problem you got, everything in the hands of Jesus that will wound it for you. Give it to him. Give it to him. Whatever your problem, whatever your, your family, your son, your daughter, they have problems, tell them. Leave it in his hands. And it is a safe thing to trust God to be faithful the desires which he creates. Army, Amy Carmichael wrote that. It is a safe thing to trust him, to trust God, to fulfill the desires that he had created. God gives us des desires when we seek them. He gives us great desires. He will make it happen. And one last one. God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. John Piper wrote that. When we are most satisfied in God, God is most glorified in us. When I was young and when I'm old, satisfaction of my life is like no comparison to when I was young. When you're young, you're looking for all sorts of things. You're wondering about all sorts of things. You're in mystery. What is life? What is going to be? What is God even? And now my life is so satisfying. Even without a wife, even without a helpmate, because I have Jesus as my helping. I have Jesus as my pride. I have Jesus that's with us. He's with us. And it's nice to have a helpmate, but God is our greatest helpmate. Praise the Lord. Okay. Let's go on. I think I will put this down here. Okay. Um... I have uh, this here that God is faithful. So let me just go on here on the word of God here. There are some countries in the world where the electric supply is not reliable. I've been to the Philippines. They, re they relentlessly turn it off often uh, when uh, people need it, like at nighttime, there's no lights. That is very common in many countries. In Russia, they're doing that. They're doing it. In in many countries, we don't know how good we have it here to have electric all the time and to instantly be able to call on your phone at any time. That's not true in every country. So in these situations, when you use any electric appliance, you may have the power cut off at any time and you can't count on it working all the time. Our electric supply is, is very faithful in America and it ever goes out because of an electric storm, if, if it ever goes out because of an electric storm or something, we are surprised. But that is what happens sometimes, but not often. Because our whole lives are lived in dependence on it precisely because we most count on it. When there was outdoor facilities to use for the bathroom, when there was a pump that you pump by hand, uh, and, and then you had a, a little uh, oil lamp or something. That is what, what people used to depend on. You have parents that probably told you stories. Most of you grew up in a uh, time of having electric, but it's amazing. I go back to those times a little bit because one of my first cars was a 48 Dodge, my grandparents' car. But I, I do know what um, some people live uh, where they did not have electric. And that is uh, quite different. And so God is faithful, like electricity, to give us the things that we need that, you know, we have the world, the United States, the electric power company giving us electricity. God gives us the electricity. He is faithful. And he, he supplies what we get in this country. Good morning. Good morning. And praise the Lord. The faithfulness of God is so good. And so God is faithful. Man can be faithful. Hopefully, I can be a really faithful person to people I know. As a pastor, I'm faithful. And God is faithful to me in return. But see, we learn how to be faithful through God. And so through a storm or something, we might lose electricity. And and like I live in Barron, and we get out and we've got the Barron Cooperative, they're wonderful people. Bless you, dear. You can join if you want. Uh, and, and 
praise the Lord, they are right on it when the power goes out. They're there as fast as they can. That is wonderful. That is how God is. That is how faithful God is. That is how faithful God is. People are not always reliable, but God is all the time. God is all the time. And then electricity is 100% reliable. But what about God? God is 110%, 200, 1,000% dependable. That his electricity, as far as the power of God, let's say electricity is like the power of God. That is how God is. You can depend on it. You don't have to worry. The word of God won't turn on when you open it. It is there as a lie, and it can give you energy like nothing else. When I prayed for that person yesterday, and the lady touched him, she said, I felt it, the power of God. That is how God is. We don't always feel it that way. But what the results are, and God hearing you, that is always faithful. God hears us in all our prayers. He knows our deepest desire. And he knows not what we want so much. He knows what we need. Our wants are one thing. Maybe we'll get it, maybe we won't. Maybe we'll get a car that we want, maybe we won't. Maybe the house, maybe the wife, maybe the husband, maybe the job. But with God, he gives us what we need. And sometimes what we think we need is the worst possible thing. And when you're young, you find you, you sometimes experience it. Hopefully when you get old, you don't do it so much. But you make a choice, and you think this is the right thing for me, whatever that is. And you realize, oh boy, it's the worst thing I could ever do. Because that's why we, that's why people don't understand. I really trust God in everything I do. And I say, Lord, please, this is your, pet, your life, my life is yours. Lord, give me the things you want me to have. The, the wife I want, if you want me to have. Or the job you want me to have. Or the, the car you want me to have. Or the house to live. And it is so nice when you can trust God in that way. God is totally reliable. The Bible tells us over and over again that God is faithful. When God revealed himself to Moses in Exodus 34, the Lord, and it says, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Whoa, hallelujah. Come on, shout too loud. I might wake up some people sleeping. I know. But, <laughs> listen, it's so exciting. It's so exciting. The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate, gracious Lord, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. And his faithfulness continues through all generations. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Forever. I have a dear saint, a friend. She's a saint in the sense that she's born again Christian. Her husband was a doctor here in town for many years. I think I can say he, he was Dr. Christensen. Many of you might know that name. And he was a wonderful man because he would let people sneak in the back door and he would take care of them if he knew them. But he, he did so much good. And anyway, she is still living. And I just want to say how she is so faithful. We sit down and talk. She's in not a nursing home up here, but another place. And she just, just gives God, and she has the word of God, the memory, and all of there. And I, I, I remember her back in the 70s doing these things where people come to your home and have church and have Bible. And she had all the young people come there. What a dear saint. I, I, I say that to recognize the faithfulness of this lady. And many of you have probably done things like this. And so the faithfulness God honors. And God honors us. Uh, so this morning I'd like to thank the faithfulness of God and, and encourage us to rely on his faithfulness. The nature of God's faithfulness my first subject is, God does not decide to be faithful on a whim. He doesn't wake up some morning, I keep looking for a cord on this mic, I'm so glad there's no cord. <laughs> I love it. He doesn't wake up some morning and say, well, let me see, I'll be faithful to this, to my son. And you're a son to God. No matter what age you are, 
<coughs> unfaithful to you then today. No. He says, I'm faithful to everyone. He says, I'm faithful to you because I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Every one of us, God is faithful. God is faithful when we can't even recognize. I've got stories. It's called I Survive. It's on TV, and I don't watch much, but this I love. And this one story is really incredible. This guy was in the water for hours, and there's these stories going on. But he survived because God was faithful, I believe. And because he did not quit, and he kept on thinking of different things he could try. He finally was able to swim seven miles or so. And finally, this they, they, they caught it. The water calmed down, and they was able to see him in the morning. Praise the Lord. If he would have gave up because the waves were bad at the beginning, morning, and everything. If he would have gave up, he would have just been a little ways longer, and then he would have been rescued. He was rescued because he was faithful to God, and God was faithful to him. So God does not decide to be faithful on a whim or because he seems like the right thing for the day. The first thing we need to understand in thinking about his faithfulness is that God is faithful to his name. The name he gave Moses was I am. I am, I am, I am, the I am. Moses said, what is the name I should give to your people so that they know I talk to you? And he says, say the I am. I am is everything. There is nothing else you need to say. He is everything. He is the I am. He is faithful and true. He loves us so much. And his faithfulness, he is patient that we become faithful to him. Many times we fail the Lord. Maybe even today. But God is faithful. And that's why when I come to church and I do preaching and stuff, especially when I'm ministering, but even if I come to church, I like to have a quiet morning. I don't like distractions. It keeps my mind focused on the Lord, right? Keep my heart focused on what God wants to do. First thing we need to understand in thinking about his faithfulness is that God is faithful to his name, his character, and his word. The faithfulness of God is deeply rooted in who he is. You know, honestly, I'm not going to do this. I could be here all day. I have, I have so much. I, I'm not going to do it. But the faithfulness of God, it is, there, you could be here for a week. It's so incredible, faithfulness of God. And, and God loves when he sees us being faithful. And I'm glad this is where it's at because I can see that clock now too. <laughs> it's overpowering them. It's good to hear. Praise the Lord. And just as faithful. Praise the Lord. You know, right? Thank you. I really appreciate that. I, I go out of the nursing homes and I do a Christmas ministry where I come. We have a group that comes. But you know, I'm going to have my, I'm, hopefully, I'm going to have my daughter and her kids here maybe come back. Can they come in now without the COVID? Or they still have to get permission? Um, I think you'll have to talk to me okay. about that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But. But I go to others and come with me. Anyway, it is so awesome. <laughs> because you folks are all over 23. You're all over, over 30 years old. Or maybe even 40, right? And what I'm saying is, you have learned to be faithful. Whether it's to other ones or to God. Hopefully you're all faithful to God. You all know how God loves you. And you all have that faithfulness. It's a precious thing to be here. Precious thing. Um, so, so let's go here and here again I'm where I where God is faithful and he is true to his name. God is very concerned for the repetition of his name. In Psalm 106 we read, yet he saved them for his name's sake to make his mighty power known. God's very own repetition is at stake in all that he does. In other words, he stakes his life on it. He stakes his name on it. God stakes his repetition on it. Like the president, if he says something, let's see if he does it. They don't always do it. They don't always do what they promise, and that is sad. 
But a true leader and a true faithful leader will stick his name on it and he will do what he promises. His name reveals who God is and he is consistent with his name as an expression of his repetition. In Genesis 16, verse 13, Hagar, who fled from Sarai, Sarai, Sarai is the name of Sarah. Before it was Sarah, it was Sarai. Because God changed her name. Because she treated her, um, Hagar um, was the one that had a child to uh, Abraham. Abel at the time, and who fled from Sarai because she treated her poorly, met with God and discovered the name of God as the one who sees me. There's another name for God. God has so many names. The one who sees me. He sees each one of us. He sees each person here. He sees everybody in the world. The one who sees me. God's name is the one who sees me, and Hagar discovered that when she was outcast both from her family and from the family where she was at work, God saw her. God is the one who sees and is faithful to this name, is seeing all who are bowed down and oppressed. God is faithful. When we're calling out, we're desperate, we're in trouble, um, God is faithful. And another story I was watching, a, a lady had been just brutally beat up and, and hurt and, and everything. And these people would not let her into her house. She was trying to get in and get help. But they, they called the police for her. And yet, you know, and, and yet God was faithful and saved her out of a situation. She broke free from these, these people that are going to murder her. What an incredible story. And when people don't, it's, these stories are incredible because the people don't give up. The, 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 the series I've watched, I Survive. Is that's the one thing that stands out. They are thinking, most of them will say, I'm thinking of my children. I don't want them to go out without a mom, without a dad. I'm thinking of my child. I don't want them not to have me. I'm thinking of my father, my mother, all sorts of reasons. So, and with Hagar, God saw her. God is the one who sees and is faithful to his name and seeing all who bow down and oppress. So that was her. She bowed down and oppressed. And God saved her. She was dying. She laid down by a, a, a thing. She put her baby underneath a bush. She says, Lord, I, I'm dying. I'm going to die. And so she let her baby die so it's not so close because she didn't want to hear her baby cry. She didn't want to have her heart to break as the baby's going to die. And God says, no, I'm faithful to you. And God saved her. And God brought her out of that. And Sarai actually, I mean, uh, Hagar, actually is the people now that's in, um, in um, Gaza Strip and stuff. Her, her generation lived, and God gave a promise to them, those children. A different one than to Abraham, but he gave a promise to them. And he took care of her. When God introduced himself to Moses, good morning. Good morning. Yes. Moses wanted to know his name so that he could give Israel a name that could be that they could lie on. Here we go. God revealed himself as I am. I and then M. A M. I am. Because God could be trusted as the one who is God over all who is the highest ruler over all. Moses knew. See, God is the best example for anyone who wants to be a ruler in America or in the world, wants to be a king or princess or president, they should examine God. They would have the best example. God is the best way, the best ruler ever. When God introduced himself, he said to Moses, I am. Because God could be trusted as the one who is God over all, who is the highest ruler over all. Moses knew that he could go on to the enemy's camp of Pharaoh with a message from God because he knew that God would go with him. God is true to his name, and because he is, he can, we can know that he is faithful. 
faithful. He is faithful. That is so good. He is true to his name. I just want you to get the picture of what I'm saying. That in this country, in this America, if our governor of, of Wisconsin, if our president of the United States, if these leaders would put God first and really listen to what the Bible says, can you imagine this country would have, this world would have no choice but be a Christian country and world. I mean, there would not be uh, things that would divide us and hurt us, uh, take enough life and stuff, take innocent life and all that. It would not be happening. So he is, the next one here is, he is a true to his character. He is true to his character. I think I have time for this one, and I have to stop. But I generally like to be on time, and so God is always on time. And so I'm a person that can be counted on. I like being uh, faithful. I strive to be faithful as a man of God. Not bragging, not boasting. I don't need to. I'm not too loud, right, am I? Okay. I don't need to boast. I'm not boasting. I'm saying as a declaration. I'm saying proudly, God has taught me to be faithful. And I teach my daughter that. And now she teaches her boys that. Isn't that wonderful? It's like many of you, all you folks have done, I'm sure, is taught them to be faithful. And they can rely on me. My job can rely on me. My church can rely on me. People that know me can rely on me. I may not be able to do everything they want, but they know that I will pray, nothing else. They know I am faithful. That's what God wants us to do. God is faithful. He wants us to be faithful. The faithfulness of God is also seen in the fact that God is so true to his character. What is the character of God? One of the most powerful words to describe God's character is the Hebrew word hes. H-E-S-E-D. It's a Hebrew word. Well, let's see what it says. It is usually translated steadfast love. Wow. Yes. Steadfast love. H-E-S-E-D. Mm. Steadfast love. Was it steadfast love that forgave Adam and Eve? That God loved them even though they sinned? Was it steadfast love that he didn't just destroy them and say, I'll try it again? It was steadfast love. And God said, no, I will keep Israel. I won't destroy them. I will keep Adam and Eve. I will keep Brother Mark. I will not give up. I will be faithful to them. I will teach them to be faithful. The faithfulness of God is so wonderful. It's, it's translated... The soul that faithfulness of God is steadfast love. In Deuteronomy 7, verse 9, it says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is faithful God, keeping the covenant, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. A thousand generations. It says that in the Bible. This is one of the many verses that connect God's faithfulness to his love and kindness. This verse reveals that God is fulfilled with compassion. If God is true to his character, God is filled with compassion. Compassion is the thing that when I'm tired, I don't want to do something else, and yet I know somebody needs me to pray with them and talk to them or give them a ride or do something for them or feed them. My compassion says I better do the extra mile. Somebody hits me on one cheek, I will turn the other cheek. And maybe I'll turn it again when people have come against me and been falsely accusing me. It's a good thing. Everyone in the world would agree with that. Just a lot of people don't have Christ that can give us that. Jesus Christ can give us that endurance and that determination and that awesome cry and drive us in us to say, Lord, I want to serve you. I want to be a picture of who you are to other people that they can say, wow, there is a God. There's a God. There's a wonderful story of a man that was lit all in prison, and the prisoners thought there's no way, no one ever get out. There's another country. And they said, You'll die here. They laughed at him. He had a word from the Lord that he was going to be lit off. And he was. 
And as he's walking, and they look out over the wall, they can see him walking. And, and they're looking, and he, he's a man of God, and he told them, he went, and, and as they're watching him walk away, these prisoners that did not believe in God, they said, there is a God. There is a God. When they see him leaving, because God was faithful, and he promised, I will let you go free. Almost done here. God is faithful. And God, if God is true to his character, we can count on God's faithfulness to his love. Why are the some, what are some other aspects of God's character? God is one who saves and he is consistent with his character. We can count on him to save. He is known as a God who is upright. Therefore, we can trust that he will always be consistent with what he is right. Deuteronomy 32 says, comments on the faithfulness of God, his uprightness. He is the rock. His, work, his works are perfect, and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, he's upright, and he's just. There are many other aspects of his character and faithfulness of God is seen in, in that he is consistent in all these different characteristics. In many different forms we've seen God. We've seen God in Jesus. We've seen God in the Old Testament, in the children of Israel going through the desert. Forty years of God's faithfulness, feeding them every day. Do you understand what they did? Their clothes never got old for 40 years. They never went hungry. Every day they had food. They had manna come down from heaven. Heavenly food. It was the best tasting, most scrumptious and fulfilling food ever. We know that. And we know also that God faithfully kept them from illness, from sickness. Only the ones that were, that maybe that revolted against God at first. But the ones that were faithful and cried out to God, he stayed with them. Praise the Lord. God is so faithful. We will end with um, number 70 there, and then I'll just say a prayer. But let me just finish here just saying, I'm so glad God is faithful. And that I recognize that, brother, I get everything I want in life. It doesn't matter. This is not my home. We're just I'm just passing through. This is not your home. We won't be in this body forever. The Bible says one day we will be in heaven. If you love the Lord, know the Lord. Like I said, if you need any prayer afterwards, I'll pray with you. But God is faithful. And he has a home for us. And the Bible says he also has a new body. The old body doesn't work so well. I got arthritis in my shoulders, my, my knees, or well, not my knees. But, and God is faithful. I'm praying and I'm hoping. Maybe change my diet, maybe that will help and stuff. But you know what? God is faithful. Praise the Lord. Go ahead, sister. Thank you, Jesus. Page 70. 70. Page 70.
do it with my group, we do it. Oh, come let us settle. And then we get a little louder. Oh, come let us settle. And then we get loud. Oh, come let us adore in Christ the Lord. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. That is a Christmas song that can be sung any time of the year. And uh, I think that's fit, fitting to have that with what I share. And let me do a prayer to the end here. It's, it's a blessing prayer. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Hallelujah. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Let me sing a little blessing song. The blessing of the Lord be upon you. I bless you in the name of the Lord. Blessing of the Lord be upon you. And we bless you in the name of the Lord. The Lord bless you. Not only I bless you, but the Lord bless you. The Lord bless each one of you. You bless one another. Show love to one another. When you have family here, just and show them love. And show each other love. Pray one for another. Pray for our government. Pray for this world. Pray for the peace of God upon Israel. Pray for each other. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. All right, if you guys want to.